This is a buff, which means that uh, I have no responsibility whatsoever what is happening the next 45 minutes. It is a collective effort, meaning that uh, it's everybody else. I hope others take more responsibility than me. And uh, one thing you can do is you can join the Gobby and uh, write what we are dis uh, finding out here. So how many of you know what Web ID is, or maybe the opposite. How many of you uh, have no clue what a Web ID is? Fair enough. No, it's 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 perfectly fine. Uh, so maybe I should just try and and give a a, a short summary. I was exercising that uh, <laughs> just uh, 15 minutes ago also. Um, so Web ID is is one one piece of a of a larger puzzle puzzle that is called uh, the semantic web. Uh, WebID is the ability to authenticate on what has exercised. What, there's, there's two levels of this. There's the, the, what has been practiced the most at the moment, and then there's the possibilities, technicalities, details later. So I will tell the simple story of what has been practiced the most, which is you uh, have an, uh, a client side certificate on your web browser, and you access a web server. That and the web server is verifying you not by the certifier of your certificate, but instead by a hint that you also include on the client side certificate that points to a, on a, another web page that you own, which has more information about you. So that's the very short version of what WebID is. Is there anybody who still has no clue <laughs> what I have just said? Um, uh, do any of you know about the, the, the underlying thing called FOF, friend of a friend network? Someone is nodding. One was nodding. Uh, anybody heard about the thing called Facebook? Okay, someone is laughing. Uh, Facebook is, is trying to, to uh, combine the, uh, the knowledge of who are, who are your friends by who are your friends' friends. So when you log into Facebook the first time, if you only know, tell one of your friends, then instantly it can pop up and say, oh, if you know that person, maybe you'll know this person also. That is part of this logic of graphing your relationships. And relationships can on not only be about friends, it can also be about knowledge in other ways. So the thing that I have a passport, and this passport is issued by this government, and someone trusts this government to issue passports. This is also a graph of relations about facts. So one of the things that have been tested the most in, in relation to WebID and FOF is this uh, playing with friendships and how you can build trust based on friendships. Now, most of us in this room probably know that that is pure evil because that is what Facebook is doing. But it's, it might not be the only way that you are reasoning on verifying on facts. It could be other chains of uh, fact chasing that you are doing than the fact chasing of who are your friends. If, you know you, if I know your friends, I know who you are in bed with. It called, could also be things like what we are actually doing, practicing with PGP, by showing a passport and then reasoning that, well, if this passport looks pretty nice, then it probably is issued from the government that is printed on the paper. Um, this buff is uh, is born by uh, by um, the interest by uh, to 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 have Debian use WebID as a way to identify the the users, the, the uh, developers, and the maintainers of uh, in, in Debian against the Debian services, which could then also be used for outside services. It's a little tricky if if we're starting from completely from scratch with what is WebID, because then maybe we, are, we cannot reach the, the point of, of discussing how, how we actually are going to use it. Um, is anybody in the room, you, you knew about uh, WebID, is anybody else, is someone knowledgeable about semantic web in here, or am I the only one? You know something about semantic web, you also? Um, could you maybe help me uh, in explaining this? 
I've tried one angle of this and I have a feeling that I was a little confusing in the way I was explaining it. C could I... Uh, with a microphone. Just turn your head around. There's a microphone behind you. Uh, hello? Does anyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, you um, separate the semantic information that you want to publish, uh, make it machine readable, so uh, that uh, other instances like uh, semantic web browsers can uh, read this information and graph them to the user as he wants it displayed. So basically, uh, as I understood it, you make re machine readable information. Uh, as replacement for what we do uh, these days with HTML documents and uh, do uh, the presentation at the user at the client side. Yeah? yeah. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> sure. Um. So, I'm not quite sure if, how to how to move on from here. If we, if we can, we can try to talk about WebID without people really uh, certain about what what we're talking about here. Um, how how many of you op know know uh, OpenID as a mechanism to 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 separate the authentication from the uh, from the services? Okay, that was that was a little better. Um, so, one of the ideas of open ID is, is this: that you separate your, the, the service itself shouldn't contain your, it shouldn't remember your passwords. You should be able to separate that and have the passwords in a trusted place. And uh, so, you have a third party saying uh, go or no go for is this person uh, saying who he is, who he claims he is saying. Um, WebID is, is similar in that fashion, but with the difference is that, that uh, the way that you are expressing this verification process is done using this, uh, this uh, technology of semantic web. So what is the power of that, as far as I understand it, is that um, you are in control of this third party. You can set up your own uh, service that provides this, this verification uh, process where OpenID is uh, you, this, the two services, the service, the, for instance, the webmail service and, and the OpenID service. These, the authentication service and, and the actual service you want to reach, they need to exchange some information with each other in order to have this verification process work. And as far as I understand it, the WebID uh, design uh, avoids revealing some of the information to the, uh, the, the well, for instance, the uh, email service, the web webmail service, you can you can you can separate this much, uh, more strong. Another stronger separation is also in in the pr approach from Mozilla called uh, called uh, browser ID. Now it's been uh, renamed to Persona. One of the f one of the weaknesses uh, of of Persona and, and browser ID is that it's tied to the browser. That means that it's when you are interactively uh, on your web browser you can let your browser, you can pass on the verification process to your browser and it, has, it contains the, the identifier. It has something similar to the certificates, but a new design that, uh, that stays within the browser. The, the, the flaw of that or the weakness of that is that you can only do it as a user sitting next to your browser. You cannot pass on uh, the, the task to uh, an agent working on your behalf. If you, for instance, have a... a as if you want to tell one of your robots to figure out what is the cheapest price for flying uh, to, to Hong Kong, then you cannot have this robot acting on your, uh, on your behalf. For instance, if you had uh, extra cheap uh, tickets, if you identify who you are, you cannot pass it on to a different uh, machine, a ident different identity. And WebID has this, uh, it's machine readable, it's machine operatable. It's not tied to, it must be a human-operated uh, service that is run. Yes? Uh, with the microphone, please. Yes. 
So if I would like to test one of these technologies today, are there any bigger sites using them? Um, there is only test sites, there's only demo sites using uh, using WebID today. Uh, but some of the demo sites is also functioning as OpenID sites. You can you can set up a WebID authentication which is then providing a service that is OpenID. Um, OpenID with its weakness of revealing too much information is a weaker form of authentication and then WebID, but you can weaken your WebID service and have it also act as an OpenID service, if you like. So if you want to interact with the larger world today and play with whatever, can, what can you do with if, if I have a WebID? Then you can set up, or you can use, if you trust, uh, an OpenID service that authenticates using WebID. I mean, okay. some, 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 web ID, some, some open IDs, the most web open IDs I know of, when you log into those, you have to type in a password, so you have to memorize a password. If you imagine that the user side of that, instead of replacing the having to show a password with uh, having to present a client-side certificate, which it then verifies using your FOFI uh, ID on running on your server. So you can, ha you can chain load an open ID with WebID. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was just uh, asking because it would be nice to see the usability with normal users. So mm. if I would send a few lines of instructions to a few people with different platforms to see if they manage to log in. Ah, yeah. So that's why I was asking for actual real life usage of, of web ID or browser ID because mm. I, I don't know either of those. I have used open ID myself. Yeah. Uh, browser ID, I haven't, I haven't played with it myself. Uh, I believe that it works in recent versions of uh, Mozilla. Obviously, it's that, that's the ones that are driving this. Uh, I'm not even sure if it, if it exists in, in, uh, in Chromium and, and others. Uh, yet. So, yet. so with but this but in mind, I just wonder if it's too early for Debian to start using this technology if it's not widely used, or um, do you think that by having Debian use it, it could become more accepted? What I think is that w uh, the, the way I see it is WebID is working now and has been working for quite some time because the uh, the structure of WebID is that it's standardizing different use cases of existing uh, certificate with TLS. So there's no new invention in the technical parts of this. It's already used in the browsers. There's some weaknesses in the user experience of Ex handling, exactly, handling exactly. certificates. Yes. And there are some uh, works on uh, some, of, some of the things that makes it more user-friendly if you, if you do some extra work today is that you sidestep a little bit and run uh, JavaScript-based uh, certificate generation. That is security-wise bad because you don't you ha then have a chunk of code that you don't really verify because you loaded it from a web server. Yeah, this I think these are exactly the issues because yeah. I've never seen mobile users use client-side certificates with the browsers. No, they won't even recognize the term. Uh, and I, I I've only seen people in companies using these on company laptops. And they haven't installed them, but the staff of the company has installed them. So I wonder what sort of usability issues we're going to run into. Well, the reason that happens is uh, companies typically have some kind of CA. And so the, the, the PKAI is taken care of. Whereas if it's not a hierarchical organization, that's that tends to be a problem. Okay, there was a, <coughs> a question on on IRC, uh, whether uh, WebID is related to OAuth? Ah, uh, no, <laughs> it is not. O OAuth is, uh, as I understand it, is OAuth is tied to uh, the OpenID way of doing things. Uh, WebID is independent from this. Okay. So. Some of the um, well, th this this question of, of whether it's 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 usable right now is there's this uh, this 
there's this chicken and egg problem of uh, web browsers don't really see the the relevancy of improving the client side certificates because well it's dead in the water that's just not really used anymore. But the point is that well it could be used if it it is used in a different way than the hierarchical uh, certification that it, that it was intended for, what it, that it was promoted for uh, for, a, for a long time. But is it true that m mobile browsers don't support client authentic uh, client certificates? Not that, as far as I know. That would be news for me. Okay, I, I, I don't I don't know. I don't think that it, that it's the case that that they don't support client side certificates. I think that it's the case that they don't have uh, the kind of of, uh, of user interface for managing importing uh, from outside. Maybe they don't have the external storage. If you don't have a file system, then you cannot say, open up and import this PKS12 uh, file because you don't have a file system to in install it from. So that, okay. that might be the, the situation that it had uh, cut some wings. So you need to Im operate only within the browser. OK. Um, so as I understand it, that what, is, what is usable now and is claimed to actually even be user friendly now is to do it. Uh, by loading JavaScript that then uh, makes a shim over the things that the web browsers do not... Uh, ah. The web browsers do, do not do uh, elegantly yet. And the weakness of, th of that ob obviously is that if you're doing security that you're loading off the internet, then what secure is that? Is that? So um, another stronger uh, argument of... of uh, a skepticism about about web ID is that uh, the test cases done now until now is test cases both about tied to this uh, ontology called the the, the fof, friend of a friend, which is uh, which is um, exposing your information about your friendships uh, publicly. You didn't. You don't need. In principle, you don't need to publish your information. You could just share, share it in, a, in secret circles. But that has not been practiced. That has not been tested, because that is more complex to do. You need to run uh, some interactive servers instead of static web uh, pages. You need to publish. So it's more complex to set up a test uh, environment for for doing that. And also, when doing the actual verification uh, triangle with WebID, what has been tested the most is using what I've been talking about all the time until now, this, these certificates of uh, TLS uh, transport. But really, the Web ID design don't need to use certificates. It could use other means of uh, ensuring that the transport is, uh, is established sa safely. Um, so in the most recent uh, draft of the, whoops, of the Web ID, uh, Specifications, uh, yeah, here, no. There's the Web ID specification, and then there's the recent draft of it. In the recent draft, they have split it up in two different specifications, one called Web ID and one called Web ID TLS, to emphasize that, well, Web ID itself need not use TLS for its establishing the, the uh, secure exchange between these endpoints. It's just the one that has been practiced the most. It's not the one that has been tested the most. There are other uh, ways to do it. One of them uh, might be using Tor, uh, Tor Onion uh, uh, URLs. The only thing that, that the Web ID, that the, the core design uh, requires, is that it, it is using uh, URIs. So you can use different URIs than HTTP or HTTPS URIs. It could also use uh, PGP URI if you want to. Then you need to define that PGP URI and you need to uh, exercise how to interact with these PGP URIs. But in principle, there's no, nothing in the long ter longer term to, to against having a different kind of security structure than the one which is tied to the domain name system that some deem as being completely useless and flawed uh, and tied to this. Uh, Web ID sidesteps from the hierarchy of certificate issuing, but it does not sidestep from, it's tied to domain names in the Web ID plus TLS uh, implementation. But that can also be avoided by other implementations, other sub implementation, implementations than uh, the TLS one. So one of the, one of the things that, uh, that 
I see could be relevant in Debian now is not to have Debian provide services that our mothers and our uh, sisters and, 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 and friends can use similar to OpenID. What I imagine that we could do is the, some of the services that we now provide that we need LDAP access to inject a PGP key to issue a temporary or an, a different uh, single, uh, simple uh, uh, key phrase for a service. Instead of having a key phrase, we can have it spit out a, cer a certificate that we could use. So that we could have our uh, interactions with our services being possible to do with web services. We could pass on to our agents individually without it having to be hard coding a simple number that is then uh, used, uh, stored in clear text on our machine. So we could start using these structures that are standardized, and then on the back end we can use uh, semantic web tools to, uh, to juggle with the data that we are, uh, are fetching that way. So, but if most of the crowd here is more interested in hearing what this could be <laughs> instead of uh, discussing it, then uh, I don't, this, was n this is not what I had prepared for. <laughs> Okay, I can see that there's a lot of things filled in on the derby. So one of the, one of the one of the benefits that I could see in in, uh, in moving from this current LDAP-based activation of, a, of having a, an account on a service uh, to using WebID is that we could decide that fr from the beginning we, could, we would bootstrap it with all of the Debian maintainers, all the Debian uh, developers that already have a, an account on our systems. But it would be quite easy to then extend a network. For instance, some of the Debian.NET machines might want to say, well, we want to, uh, we want to trust and give access to all of the people that have a, an account on Debian and all of the people in this other circle that is some, in a, some other way is bootstrapping and setting up their uh, web ID authentication. So you can have other, you can have, you can join multiple networks in that way. And that means that we could easily expand services to include more people. It could be that one of our Big derivatives is setting up WebID the similar way. What Ubuntu is doing at the moment, as I understand it, is that they're running things on a centralized server at Ubuntu, where they authenticate against their uh, identifier-based services. But that is tied, that is centralized, and we cannot really uh, collaborate with those, except if we use maybe OAuth, which means that then they are tracking every time we are doing things. Another. Mm -hmm. There's another question from, from IRC, uh, or uh, rather a suggestion to check http colon slash slash webid.debian.net slash as a start. Yes, I have been there, and that site just redirects to the, um, to the wiki page. Ah, okay. Which is introducing that uh, Debian... Debian now has uh, FOF profiles auto-generated for all Debian developers, all package maintainers, both for people in Debian and for people that are not, don't have an account in Debian. I have this odd situation myself that uh, the way it's generated is from your email address, and I don't use my Debian email address, so I have no FOF uh, profile for my account in Debian. I only have a FOF profile for as being... I, I'm treating it, treated as an external... Uh, person. So, so an example of what you can do now. This is not Web ID fully. This is not. There's no authentication service anywhere. This is only the part of having some profile that can then be the um, the third 
thing that you reference against, that you make the lookup against. If you com come with your certificate and say, well, I am this person, you can just go here and verify that it's true. Then it's the third, part, uh, third point. The little funny thing about that is, well, the third point is supposed to be in your control. And this third point is in Debian's control. This is a Debian service generating fo profiles. So do you want to build uh, something that works on a global scale, or do you want to build something for Debian and sort of ass assorted, trusted other organizations? Because then one thing you could do is Debian has the, the Debian key ring, which is uh, cl uh, strongly connected. Debian I, has I some. Hope. So you could use the key fingerprint as your uh, web ID URL, and then look that up. And if it if the if the uh, GPG key is sufficiently authenticated, it's the, it's the right person, something like that. Yeah. Web ID uh, Debian already has ways to uh, authenticate Debian uh, members, yeah, Debian account members. You want to get rid of the central server, yeah, but and using the key ring would do that, because you could put the key ring on each machine. So you wouldn't require trust relationships between the machines, and you wouldn't even require active network connections between the machines. How would I verify that it's the right person? Anybody could claim that they have the, my email address, and you could look up that it's the key. So then I would be using signed emails uh, to verification. Or what, I mean. Okay, let me, let, me, let me try to answer your question instead of bouncing it back. Um, as I see it, it makes sense to have Debian provide a service for the same people that it already provides other services for. The benefit of using Web ID, instead of using the current services, the current mechanisms of authenticating uh, its users, is that this new service is a standardized format for service, for decentralized authentication. Which means that a Debian plus Fedora service, some third party, or a Debian service that is meant to be for Debian people and for Fedora people, can then say, oh great, we have this standardized way of doing things. We don't want a copy of all your passwords to your logins. And we also don't have, want to have a pipeline to, to your DPD keys in Fedora land. We just want you to run this standardized service just as we are running a standardized service. And then we can, every time people log in, it will resolve that it will verify at, at our end or it will verify at your end. Because it's verified at, at each user's own end. The thing is, what has what Obergeeks has provided until now is a demo of it is possible to generate a profile for each user at, at the Debian server and a service as he is running. But really, what to make this really work, I should not have my certificate point to his service because his service is no proof that I am me. If I am pointing to a server that I own then I prove that I am me. So if I point to a server, and the server certificate on my server is also uh, tied to me, then I have a, a identified that, uh, then I have proven that the, the, the identifier that is running around on some web browser is tied to some server, the owner of the server. So sure, if my server is hacked, but then it's the same thing as if I, if I lose my key ring, my, my, my key to lock myself in. This, the, 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 the core idea of WebID is to separate, to have the authentication process being multiple points instead of being everything contained within one point. So you're not running around with a key that contains every valuable details for you to log into a keyhole because you maybe don't trust the keyhole and it might be a complex thing to verify if the keyhole is trusted and if the key is trusted and if we trust to reach each other and verify each other. So that's the way it's, it's a chain loading of things. So it's, it's the server that does the complex things, you're running itself, but you're running it somewhere else. So you don't need to run around with all the complex stuff. As a, a, a hand up. Oh. On the topic of um, exploiting the GNU PG Web of Trust, and I'm sorry if, if you uh, covered this th before. Not at all. Uh, possibly. Uh, the. Um, one of the criticisms uh, that uh, that I read uh, when uh, WebID 
um, idea was discussed is uh, that uh, this reliance on, on uh, an exi existing CA infrastructure. And um, I'm aware that there was some work uh, from the GNU PG maintainers when GNU PG2 started out of generating uh, X509 certificates from the same key pairs that you use for the GPG stuff. So um, I wanted to know if anybody is, uh, knows of that, um, uh, of the status of this, and if this is still a thing that we could uh, use for uh, migrating people, um, or not migrating, but but uh, exploiting the web of trust and, and um, uh, creating X509 certificates for for web ID. Anybody know about this? Possibly. What? Okay. Do I puzzle things, or is that somewhat the direction that Monkey Sphere is going? Doesn't it? Um, it works also based on GNUPG keys and. Someone might kill me because I, I don't really, really uh, understand Monkey Sphere, but. As I understand Monkey Sphere, it is about um, bridging between different technologies, different protocols. So when when certificates are uh, hierarchical, certificate certification is fundamentally broken. We don't trust the kind of trust that they want us to trust. Then Monkey Sphere is bypassing that by uh, by linking up to the PDP web of trust. So it's using the PDP uh, web of trust to verify certificates. The issue, the, 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 the one in control of the certificate might have gotten it from somewhere. It doesn't matter because the, this same person signs the certificate with the PDP key. And then all of the users then look up in PDP, is it a person in the PDP web of trust that I trust myself that has signed this uh, certificate? So it sidesteps this using PDP. Um, comment from from uh, IRC, mm -hmm. the uh, from from uh, Gunnar Wolf. Monkey Sphere is rather about presenting a human friendly and human meaningful face to GPG key signatures, and so on. Thank you. <laughs> Could you send the microphone back? Uh, thank you. I really like the idea of WebID uh, till now, but um, where is your problems to roll out to the user? Um, how are you expect, uh, do you expect this uh, to happen? Um, sure, we all are techs. We all uh, probably run our own servers at home to set uh, the web ID part for ourselves up. But uh, as it goes to non-tech people, most of them don't have any servers uh, hanging around. Would it be acceptable for the principle uh, for the concept of web ID to have uh, little clusters of friends that uh, everyone has a techie in his uh, in his uh, area of friends so that one uh, does uh, like a one um, stores the web IDs of a group of people would that be acceptable well that is the same as asking me is it acceptable acceptable for for uh, for teenagers that their parents have a, a key to their uh, diaries. Well, that depends on each circle of, of the, uh, the, the policies are different. What, I'm, what I just wanted to emphasize w was that, yes, these security issues that I have heard being raised is possible to, uh, to avoid, the, so, but that makes things more complicated. It might, I mean, if you're not using DNS, then you are not using DNS. And that makes things not very user-friendly for a long time. For what? Because then you need to have uh, built Tor into your web browser, and that is a, a different task. But that's not saying that's not an argument to say that well, WebID is not user-friendly. No, WebID. If you insist that it not, must re-implement the whole uh, web, of, uh, web that as we know it, then it is not user-friendly yet. So, so, so similarly, uh, what is what has been tested and, and played with until now is WebID using TLS. And TLS has some quirks in its user friendliness that is currently worked around by running some JavaScript. All of this makes it less and less secure. 
meaning we should all drop WebID and use Facebook as authentication mechanism because that is fucking user-friendly. Everybody has a, a, a Facebook ID anyway, so we just, all of us, log in there. Th I mean, I'm not joking here. I'm saying that is what you, the people are doing now and have done for many years. Not many, a couple of years at least. I mean, independent services not tied to Facebook are using Facebook as identifier, as authentication mechanism, which is completely insane. So compared to that, it is much better that I personally set up some mechanism that people can offload some JavaScript they don't know shit about so that they can magically have some uh, access, because that's what they care about. That's user friendliness is user friendliness is not caring about the security, not caring about what's going on. I just want my fucking access to my thing, whatever it is. And looking from that perspective, it's better that I set up a service or uh, Uber Geeks, who already set up a service for Debian people, that's much, much better than Debian using Facebook. Now, so we're talking about different kinds of situations here. Well, if you're talking about the user friendliness, you're not talking about Debian developers. If you're talking about security, you're not talking about, uh, you're not talking about the, the need for, for independent you, I mean, so Debian developers trust Debian to some extent already. We are running all of the code via Debian. So we should trust Debian. So we don't have the same kind of trust issue with the service running at Debian. But if you are judging WebID as a technology, then it's very interesting to look at, is it possible to make it more user-friendly? Is it possible to make it more secure? If both things are possible, then both things combined might also be possible over time if we develop this, the, the things to do it. Both things are not medically done over time, <laughs> and, and we need to work towards that. But, but it, as I see it, you can kill WebID web by saying it's not user-friendly, you can kill it by saying it's not secure enough. Uh, but both of them is like, then you're not looking at WebID, you, you are looking at WebID as it's implemented in a buggy way using the current world bugginess. So it's the current world that is buggy, it's not WebID in principle. Yeah. Does that make sense? There's another question. Oh, on, do on people want IRC. to? Yeah? What, what would be the follow up for this both discussion? Uh. Obergeeks has already implemented some ste uh, steps. Uh, He's asking. Or Obergeeks is asking? Obergeeks is asking. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> well, I can. <laughs> Hello, Obergeeks, that's for you to decide. <laughs> now, um, there's some people jotting down what we are talking about here. I hope that could be helpful for Obergeeks and me, at least, and for anyone else who might not be scared by this, but by be excited by, th by this uh, so far, uh, to try work further on putting the pieces together so that we can have some maybe more uh, understandable proof of concept or, or a demo uh, for use by Debian. But o Obergix is asking uh, who's in charge of sso.debian.org? FTP master. DSA. DSA. My judgment, my, my guess is that from the current stand of the dialogue, the dis discussion we've had in uh, Debian Devil, uh, DSA is not currently interested in activating any web ID on Debian systems. Uh, because there has been raised some, uh, some, some skepticism about the security and, the, and also the sanity of even uh, playing with web ID at all, because uh, it has been argued that it is looping around TLS problems. So like if, even if you start out with, it, with the problems and then you try to solve it, then you're ending up with the server-side TLS still being needing uh, the hierarchical uh, trust. I was bouncing those, that criticism to the, uh, the developers at the w3c.org uh, and was encouraging them to respond in Debian because it doesn't need any authentication to, I mean, any uh, subscription to post to Debian Devel. But unfortunately, none of them didn't do, did do that. They wrote very long, uh, 
arguments back and forth about why this is not the case and uh, Debian has misunderstood completely and uh, but they are the people in developing this web ID is also some of them philosophers and they are complex to digest uh, at least for me <laughs> so uh, what I was hoping for was that they would like condensing their argument why web ID is just perfect and then they could throw that at Debian and we could have a continued discussion in Debian Devel. So at the moment, the status right now for, for, for Debian as a, as a, and the larger scale and DSA is, as I feel, is that, well, it's, it's unsolved <laughs> if WebID is trustworthy and insane to do. It's also linked from the, uh, from the wiki page. When you go to uh, WebID Debian Net, WebID Debian Net has a link to the wiki page. The wiki page has uh, a link to... was supposed to have a link to the email. No, uh, to the email. Thread. No, it doesn't. I remember wrongly. This session has a link to the thread on Debian Devel. The thread on Debian Devel was... was uh, Someone, wait, I think maybe it was me mentioning WebID. What about WebID? And Obergeek says, well, we already have a sort of WebID. We have both. And then someone else says, what is all this? And then nobody could really answer this. And that's uh, Russell, Russ Albury is coming with a lengthy one. With uh, Never heard about it before. And now I looked at it, and uh, it seems not good. And then there's a thread about me trying to f defend it, not really understanding how to defend myself against Russ Aubrey, and uh, calling for help by uh, uh, DP DK DKG, and DKG is saying, yeah, he agrees with Aubrey. Damn. So So someone has ri written here on the Gobby, why don't we use distributed authentication like the Web of Trust, uh, meaning the DPD, the PDP Web of Trust that we already have? Um, well, that is what we are doing now, so to speak, uh, in that we are we have the LDAP service that is, uh, well, we're doing it some ways now, and yes, we could do it in other ways, one way could do would, would be to to uh, to link this to monkey sphere um maybe if i understand monkey sphere correctly but one of one of the powers of web id is that it is designed around web webby objects meaning all of the things that is linked can be linked on the open data world which is the open world wide web public data and all the things that can be linked in similar fashion, but in closed networks. I'm emphasizing this other part so that it's, it's not only about if you publish all your data to the open world, to the whole world, then it is exciting. It is also exciting if you lock all your things up, but then you link, uh, link the, the things against each other the same way as the World Wide Web is doing things. What I see as powerful in that is that there's a lot of tools to handle web resources. There's less tools to handle uh, custom resources in whatever data format that you invent yourself and then you tie it to DPD directly. So yes, it, to me it could be very interesting to have WebID piggyback, uh, 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 extend WebID with a WebID dash D a PDP uh, uh, authentication mechanism instead of a WebID TLS mechanism. But saying that, oh, we don't even need WebID, we could just use PDP directly. That would be inventing something we hack together, which is not really scalable to other th things. So we couldn't reuse such a design across the board to Fedora or any other uh, free software or uh, other project. There's another question from IRC. How can one experiment and use the metadata published at WebID Debian Net? 
Oh, we are, okay. Mm -hmm. so could you repeat the question? <laughs> how, 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 how can one experiment and use the metadata published at WebID Debian Net? Um, if you follow, there's a, there's a website, webid.info, that generally introduces to WebID. And through that, and yes, it's confusing, you can also DuckDuckGo or Google or whatever you prefer for WebID and some of the uh, information there, but webid.info, and then follow that to some of the example pages, uh, some of the more recent example pages that is, that, that is still working. <laughs> um, then the places where it says, oh, and now you should use your FOF file, then you can actually point to this page. What is called WebID Debian Net really essentially now is what others call a FOF profile. WebID is the whole triangle, the whole uh, process, protocol to exchange data, where FOF profiles is one key element. And what is produced now is FOF profiles for all Debian developers gathering the data that is already public and expressing it machine-readable, grouped by each identifier, each, each person. So every time that in WebID context that it says, oh, now you should use your FOF profile, you don't need to write one yourself from scratch. You can take this profile and then start out from that one. Are we out of time or? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, thanks a lot for for joining and uh, for your patience here. I was uh, I'm sorry I didn't uh, prepare a presentation for about this, so it was a little uh, a little fussy here. But uh, that's the copy now. I believe that uh, me or uh, Obergeeks will try to uh, look through the copy and then post an email to I guess Debian Devel or wherever the other thread was also going on. And then we'll see what comes out of this. Thanks, guys.